Welcome to Some Bits, where we decode the power school development experience. Some Bits is brought to you by MBA. Let's start the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Some Bits. As always, joined here with Ryan Cockrum, Eric Scheidel, and our guest of the day is Theo Smith, hailing from Pennsylvania. Welcome, Theo. Uh, today's episode is going to be talking about incredible workarounds, but a couple quick little things. Um, I, I think I forgot to announce it last episode, but I want to remind everybody that if you want to wear our faces on your body somewhere, we do have some bit swag. Link will be in the description on the YouTube channel. Um, check it out. And as always, also, um, if you have any episode ideas or if you happen to want to be on the show, uh, shoot us an email at sumbits at mba-link.com. Uh, with that, let's get into it. Back to drinking some cocktails. Today, I am drinking Lexington bourbon, and this is a little special bottle to me. Um, one of our viewers, Peter, this one's uh, shouting out to you. Thank you for the bottle. Um, this is actually our president's uh, father um, gifted me a bottle of bourbon when I was up at the home office last week. Um, Peter, great stuff. Thank you very much. What are you guys drinking? Well, uh, if any of you recall, a couple of weeks ago, I was drinking, or a couple episodes ago, I was drinking some Trans Canada. I was drinking uh, Arrow. Um, I've got a few different options here, but uh, I, so far, I've liked every one of Trans Canada's uh, brewing company's beverages. Um, but in the multi pack I bought, and I was saving my first sampling of this one for this episode here, because it's called a County Sour. It's County Sour Series, small batch apricot sour. And it's a wheat beer, which typically I'm not too fond of. But since nothing they have brewed has steered me wrong, I'm going to jump in and find out right now and tell you what I think. So, uh, cheers. Watch carefully. <laughs> I like it. You know what? <laughs> I've, you know what? And again, I don't like too many sours. But that's because I didn't I didn't make the oh, face, which means it's not too too bad. Um, I, I I mean, still as far as sours go, eh, but uh, all all around, sorry, you know the, the genre. But as far as sours go, I'll take this one. Cheers. <laughs> you know, I'm jealous, man. Raving uh, review. Apricot. That that sounds delightful. I'm a creature of habit. Rocking the spotted cow again today. I I keep promising that I'm going to get. Mix things up and get more creative. Um, we should have gone shopping for you while I was up there. <laughs> What's that? I said we should have gone shopping for you while I was up there. I know. I, well, you know what? You know what would help? I really thought when you were introducing your bourbon there, because you you started out by just saying one of our viewers, and I thought maybe you were going to leave out the fact that it happened to be our boss's father, just like. In case any other viewers wanted to go ahead and it was our way. <laughs> hey, that's, that's an option. That's an option. We need to figure that's out a P.O. Canada, box. Yeah, our viewers Email us if you, if you want to send us something. We'll give you an address. And if you're Canadian, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, borders it's and whatnot. It's easier to ship up there. Yeah. But you only have to send 75% of it, though, if you send it to Canada. <laughs> uh. Well, there's a segue. <laughs> I know, right? Theo. All right, I am uh, having some delightful dihydrogen monoxide today. Um, <laughs> this was a 2020 vintage, and uh, I believe it comes from the Bethlehem PA water source. Uh, well, I hear it's I, very corrosive to uh, metals. Uh, it, all that monoxide. steel they had up there, um, uh. getting some hints of cherry and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's very satisfying. I, I hear if you if you oh. heat the hydrogen monoxide up to about 100 degrees, it can scald your skin, too. Well, is you this, know, is that Canadian degrees or American degrees? Celsius, that's Canadian the, degrees. you know, the sensical, the sensical <laughs> temperature scale, because zero is freezing, 100 is boiling. None of this weird 32, 200 crap. I mean, it's, technically, it's, zero is also freezing here. No, it's not. It's 32 is freezing there. Well, if well, it's yeah, zero, then zero, it's still frozen. Oh. Well, it's already frozen. <laughs> Freezing nonetheless. Anyway, Theo, <laughs> let's, let's let's disregard the Canadian for a minute. Tell us where you're hailing from. 
your kind of your experience in power school. Um, I did get a little insight to your story of how you ended up where you are. Um, I definitely think it's interesting and, and I do think it's uh, pretty relatable to a lot of our listeners. I don't think so. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Good story, buddy. Thanks for coming. <laughs> All right, so uh, I live in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, which is just right outside of Philadelphia to the northwest, and uh, the place where the Bill Cosby trial happened, that's two blocks from our (laughs) office. That is a true story, uh, in case you want to know where that is. And um, Did you get to see him? Were you hanging out, like, outside the courthouse? On the way way to work, he actually was coming in one time when I was driving driving by the courthouse. Did you get an autograph? Well, he was a little busy. Uh, so he so, probably wasn't quite in the mood for an autograph session. <laughs> but um, stop for a pudding pop. <laughs> Anywho, right, so you started, I, you know, Theo, you started at me. <laughs> I, I was doing the geographic reference. The <laughs> <laughs> so um, I joined my company in 2012, and um, is that right? Yeah, 2012 as a, a temp, actually. I just left my job in uh, arts administration, and I was uh, looking to change careers. Uh, Going to have a wife and family, so I was looking for uh, something uh, a little less head in the clouds. Because uh, you can't pico don't take head in the clouds. So uh, I started temping around, and I ended up at this uh, company that I'd never heard of before. But um, I was doing a bunch of you know mailroomy type stuff, and the that was a smart guy. So they put me on uh, special ed stuff. So really, my entry point with the company was a lot of special ed data reporting, managing special ed data systems. And uh, it still is. Uh, I still do. We have this FileMaker data, set of databases that we use to track all of our money. Uh, that we have to do a lot of maintenance on. I do... Um, I'm the coordinator for our state and federal reporting for special ed for this county. So that takes up a good part of the hustle. And then in 2017, after we had merged into the technology department, uh, we got a notice that uh, we need uh, our our power school guy left and we need some people to take over uh, power school. And I was like, what's that? And I was like, oh, it'll be fine. It's this uh, thing school teams. It's just a database, right? <laughs> yeah, all I had heard about it, and, and I'm, I'm not a technical guy. Uh, my degree is in music education, and I study mathematics, uh, so I have no programming background at all. Uh, oh, yeah. That's <laughs> definitely different. You know, I mean, every power school person comes from a different background, some way to speak. But never heard from a music background, so awesome. It is, and um, the... All I had known about Power School up to that point was it was the thing that the guy next to me was d- talking about all day. Because <laughs> the old Power School guy used to sit like cat a corner from me in the <laughs> office. And it'd always just be Power School this, Power School that, and like, whatever, dude. And then it was – so once he left, and then they said, okay, now you're in, uh, you're in charge of the Power School now. And I'm like, well, okay, what is that? And – even though I had been a teacher before, I I didn't rem- remember that we had an online grade system. Uh, we did. Uh, and the difference, I think, for us is that we are somebody who, yes, we have power school ourselves, but we also support other people who have power school. And we host about eight different people. And we provide support to about a dozen. And the tickets started coming in because people needed support. And you Sorry, can see in the districts. Yeah, Devin, some of them are districts, some of them are charter schools, some of them are we have um, career and technical centers in Pennsylvania where you can go and learn like baking or landscaping or whatever. And uh, some of them are Catholic schools. Uh, so we have 12 of those. And as you can imagine, if you haven't even heard of the product before, um, it's a little hard to then provide support, tech support for it. <laughs> uh, especially when the very first conversation they had was, it's like, well, okay, well, who are our customers? Well, we don't really know. Uh, so, <laughs> so well, that's fun. 
and from from there, it then just became a a sort of you don't get to be the deer in the headlights sort of thing. They want like this thing is broken, and I need help now. I talked to support, and I think it might have been a state issue or something like that. And uh, you know, you're our help, so you know, get to it. And now, luckily for that avenue, because of my work in special ed, I was familiar with how our state reporting works already. I just had no idea how Power School dealt with it. Gotcha. Uh, and so this really sort of brings up a lot of creativity with how you have to handle – how do you solve cases for things that you don't even know what people are talking about? Yeah. And um, – the first couple of things I tried was, you know, first thing, well, let's ask somebody who knows already. Um, so uh, I remember the very first ticket I um, had that really I was stumped on. It was a GPA calculation issue at a high school. And uh, uh, what it boils down to, they had a system that used weighted um, weighted GPAs for honors classes in a different way for AP classes. And the counseling office thought that they had configured stored grades and course setup in order to account for that, uh, but they had not. And so the counseling office knew the GPAs were wrong because they knew how to calculate it by hand, but didn't understand why Power School was coming up with a different answer. Different number. And so I'm like, I don't know either. Uh, so. I go Trial through by fire. Let's go. Let's figure it, it out. And so the first thing I ask, and I, I asked somebody who was supposed to help us get acclimated. And I said, uh, Hey, I'm having this little GPA problem. And, uh, what do you think's going on? I said, well, they set it up wrong. It's like, uh, yeah, but how, uh, well, you know, they did it wrong. But <laughs> what's, the, what's the right way though? Um, uh, that I asked them. yeah, I don't know. This, <laughs> <laughs> and so then I realized, you know, you gotta you gotta figure it out yourself. So yep. invention what is necessity is the mother of invention. Yep, yep. Then, luckily, because I'm a math guy, I could figure out the math behind it. And and this was before I'd even uh what was then the Yahoo group, now the um groups IO, yep, IO. thing. I had not because literally there was nobody had Nobody who I knew at that time had anything to tell me about where really to go for power school help. Yeah. So I think we were all there. Well, except Eric, because he never worked at a district. <laughs> well, well, I guess it's been different that from you was, two because that was how I started my development career, though. That's true. I yeah. totally sympathize, man. When I came in here, there were no other developers to go to. It yeah. was before the developer site uh, from power school. So. I don't want to digress too much back to Theo, but I can yeah. sympathize, man. That's a rough spot to be in. For sure. And, and, well, and you know, I, I just want to add on too. It's like, there's the difference too, is that like, again, my district, I implemented power school power. Like they would tell me where to go for help and support and everything like that. You're of course jumping into it, jumping into the fray. So yeah, you don't have that same, those Listen, same pointers just, and guidance. And, and I, I tell you what was, frustrating about it you go through and and they're like okay well there's got to be some help somewhere and then like how do i get the help it's like well you can't get the help because you're not a technical contact and they're like what's that and it's like <laughs> like you gotta be so even even that part a lot of things which are pretty straightforward there's no one who said like you need to be a technical contact to right. access certain documents and power source but luckily I figured it out and what we inevitably did was we just sort of Realized, okay, we had to alter the course records to account for the weight. Some of the credits were prorated because they weren't all full credit courses, so we had to account for that in the GPA calculations. But the grades had been stored with all these points. So uh, I didn't know anything about importing and exporting. So what we did was actually went through every kid in the building, every grade, every kid, all 1,400 of them. It took me several oh, weeks. Jeez. And I went and checked every single grade for every kid in the school. And oh, we, holy crap. And we did fix it. And, you know, it's the 
they say Archimedes determined the formula for a volume of a sphere by exhaustion. And that's, <laughs> and that was exactly the same sort of thing was it's like, I know it was correct because we literally checked the entire thing. Now, obviously what I know now, I wouldn't solve it that way, but <laughs> yeah, I hope you learned something there too. <laughs> but yeah. So, so I think the topic at hand for today, incredible workarounds, that would not be an example of one. <laughs> That but I will say, for not knowing anything, I thought that was pretty incredible. Oh no, that's incredible! It. Right on topic. Like I mean, um, the end justifies the means, right? I, I, exactly. Well, and I can't think of any specific ones, but I mean, man, when I was working at my district and power schools knew, and I wasn't strong with uh, any of my my development languages or anything like that. Yeah, that sounds like something I would have done. Totally, yeah. and I probably especially just, with, especially with problems. GPAs. Yeah. GPAs are, are, are so important, right? With class rank and, and all that, um, you have to make sure it's right. And if you don't understand how power schools doing it, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes by hand is, is the best way. Well, and also um, to fix it too, uh, if you can't think of a, uh, if, you, if you're not strong enough to think of an easier way to do it, right. the hand bombing way is going to be the way you're going to do it. Because nowadays, if I'm faced in a situation like that, I mean, I'm going to take that data I'm going to maybe try to make like a, a either a, like a temp spreadsheet and like I can think of a different bunch of different ways, uh, but I could create a temp table, load up the data, run some uh, 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 formulas on that and export the data out just like it's all one big shebang. But I mean, that that definitely was outside of my scope back when I was in a district. And uh, yeah. It's, but I mean, yeah, the workarounds, the, the, the solutions, those really out of the box creative solutions are, I don't know, frankly, what make every power school administrator's job interesting, because I don't think there's one that hasn't had to have uh, come up with something like that. Yeah. And I think a lot of our listeners and, and people that are watching this have, you know, just listening to that story is going to make them go like, yeah, we, we had this one thing that we had to do something very similar just because we didn't know power school is huge and, and to try to be an expert in every piece of it is, is very difficult. So, you know, for all of our listeners, you're not alone. Like we've mm -hmm. all been there. And you know, yeah. one of, when we talk about, uh, I was listening earlier today to the, um, when you had Peranti on uh, a couple weeks ago and then talking about coming in new to a space. And I, I think one of the things that I find incredible is when you start with someone new, and now I've, I feel pretty lived in in my position. I feel like I know what I know. Um, you got to be incredible enough to tell people it's like the way you were doing this is wrong. <laughs> and a um, case in point, I had a client once. They had sections and courses backwards. Oh. So, for example, let's say if you teach algebra, that should be a course, and then maybe Mr. Smith's fifth period algebra is a section of that course. They had it reversed. Mr. Smith's fifth period algebra would be a course, and then the section of it would be. So you're I, saying it's hard to describe, but it was they wrote the backwards. expressions backwards. Maybe is that what no, you're trying to say? The way they were using courses was like how you should use sections. So you, so you they only, only like ever have one section, section of any course. So basically they mixed up the tables then? Right. So like instead of having one algebra class with five sections, they'd have five algebra classes. Wow. Okie dokie. And so you multiply that by the number of teachers oh. that they had and the number of courses. And they Holy had just learned, smokes. They had just learned to do it backwards. And they were wondering why it was taking so long. I was like, well, I said, this is not how this works. So it's, but to have somebody go up here and I know there are a lot of people who, when they get situations like that, I mean, that was a pretty big revelation. So you got to be willing for a lot of these workarounds to tell the tough truth. Wait, so they, so I mean, basically they, and I'm sorry to, I, I now I'm perseverating on this. They were looking at that uh, courses and the sections table as a one-to-one -one relationship, basically. Yes. Holy smokes. So, so they like, may have had only one algebra course per course. Yeah. Instead of, and it was, and so what it did was we just scrapped the, not scrapped, but we, the, 
every single course that's in the course table stop, you know, no longer available, rewrote the course catalog. And then oh, like, this yeah. is how oh. this works. And then, but yeah, it, some of the things that we have to do end up being revamping people's master schedules completely yeah. uh, because it's backwards sometimes. Uh, yeah. And I, I will say, I get, if you say things confidently enough, um, people will not question a lot of the things that you tell them to do. It was, uh, so basically yeah. you're saying you're full of shit most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the time. So there was where I drew up something yesterday and I was like, this is how we're going to set up the terms and power scheduler. It's going to be this many master periods and here's a diagram and we're going to go with that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if it's the best way or not, but it's the way I know how to do. So we're just going to kind of go along with it. The, <laughs> Oh, by the way, if you're watching this, those people who I'm talking to, that totally is the right way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, I mean, basically, I mean, all the things we've so far kind of been talking about, it's like the most incredible workarounds are almost always to fix a, a bigger problem. It's never, um, uh, I mean, yeah, of course, for, for development purposes, sometimes you kind of come up with workarounds and I can think of examples and all Eric can for sure too, but it's, it's always to fix something. And so, I mean, fixing that situation there with this one-to-one -one relationship that someone's uh, contrived for their courses and sections, obviously you got to do something about that. But I mean, it's, you know, the workaround is what, like extract everything out of the courses table massage the data, import it back into the sections table, and then unify the course numbers. Like, I mean, I mean, obviously there's, it's more to it than me just speaking that, but I mean, yeah, you got to come up with something. And I mean, it's, you got to think well, of you, these. You at least have to, to, you at least have to recognize the logic behind it before you start tackling the problem. And what are the tools though, to even do that? Like, I mean, to me, when it comes to, when it comes to having to come up with these workarounds, when it comes to having to solve these things, um, Excel at that point, it becomes those spreadsheets. I mean, yeah, you can do a lot with, uh, I mean, of course we all talk about SQL, we can talk about JavaScript, whatever, but at, at some point you need to pull that data out and look at it objectively. And yeah. uh, when you're dealing with a situation like that, I mean, that's, that's when you need to have it outside of the system so you can look at it and do whatever you want with it and, and have a copy of it so you can keep throwing things at it and seeing how you can try to fix it. With the well, and obviously in that situation, your your eventual intention is to import that data back yes. in where it needs to go. Yeah, so it, when you talk about tools, I think, you know, exporting exporting and importing is definitely a, a huge way to, to do a lot of these workarounds. And, and I will say a lot of, for me, coming through my, because I, I do a lot of Excel-based presentations, uh, with, especially with state reporting um, around here. And so a lot of PowerSchool crossover, especially with SQL, I actually think from an Excel point of view. So, for example, um, joins didn't really make sense to me in SQL until I compared it to a VLOOKUP. And then I was like, oh, it works exactly like a VLOOKUP. Here you have two tables. Yep. You need to get something from the other table. You need some sort of unique identifier common to both tables. It's like, oh, that's how that's joint works. Joint is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm right I, there with you, Theo. When I, I, was, first, when I was first yeah. learning SQL, I, that's exactly how I understood joins to be. And, and the biggest part, and, and I... We mentioned this in some of our email conversations back and forth. The so the the first time I, I ever got any sort of official training, because uh, I really like, okay, the biggest workaround is going to be I need somebody to tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. I can't keep making it up. This is very unproductive. This so <laughs> uh, we convinced the board to send me to Disney World because uh, every power school event is in is in like these places that look totally sketchy uh, from a like, oh yeah, it's in Disney World. Uh, <laughs> but that's where it was. So it was a, um, oh, you yes, don't you like that? I could go to Vegas instead, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, what, what I Vegas? remember Swan, the Swan and Dolphin Resort was one of the Orlando PSUs that I was at. <laughs> and it, it was, there was 2019, the last time I went, it was Atlantic City and Vegas. In the same year, I was like, 
look, man, that's where they are. I, I don't swear think, I'm learning like, things. <laughs> It's like, would you like me to write a report when I come back? I will totally do that. But <laughs> so we go down to Disney World, and and then I was like, okay, what do I take? And I was like, okay, customization. Oh, that sounds cool. I'll take customization. So I'm sitting in SQL classes because I had never heard of that before. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, and I'm sitting there, and the, the very first one was really cool where it's like, okay, you have your select statement and then you name some fields and then from, and then when we got to part two, it was clear. I had missed a few episodes <laughs> in between because <laughs> when they picked up, it was like, okay, and now we're going to do all this concatenation and having it. And we're going to do these sort of joins and we're going to have him. I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That does not follow from where <laughs> we just stopped. And, and I got really stuck on none of those classes really got into the structure of the PowerSchool database. Because I, I did not hear of a relational database. And even though I was doing work on um, our FileMaker databases, I didn't know anything behind database theory or database structure. So I didn't know that what we were doing was that sort of thing. Sure. So that was a very – that was sort of one of the big hang-ups with trying to move past that next sort of wall. And it wasn't until I met uh, his royal beardy cappiness over here on my <laughs> left in Atlantic City and where finally somebody really explaining it out and then the next phase picked up from where the previous phase uh, left off and where things finally started started to click in. So that was huge help. I'm not just saying that because you're here. That actually was a big help to me. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, no, man. I can't tell you how great that is to hear. I love teaching I and I love the when I hear right? folks say, like, I got it. I've tried to learn this before and it didn't make sense, but now I got it. And I can't tell you what an amazing feeling that is. And of course, with Eric, we know an incredible workaround is that customization reference of his. Oh yeah. And I, I remember the very first time I ever got it, I downloaded it, and the f whoever told me to download it didn't tell me where it was, like when you installed it. So was that, I installed. Are we talking about me again? <laughs> no, it wasn't you, but it was it was somebody else. Was like, oh, you got to have, you got to get this customization reference it's written by Eric and. But it wasn't – I hadn't met you yet. And so I installed it, and I remember I enabled it. And the first question I sent, well, what changed? Because I didn't know how to change – how to check a plugin to see what it installs and what it does. So it was literally, all right, I turned it on. What does it do? Yeah, where do I find it? And the person who, who told me to download it didn't actually know the answer to that question. <laughs> so it wasn't <laughs> until like a year later that I actually knew – what where the link was to actually look at it. <laughs> and that was when I met you in person where you're like, oh, I actually teach through this customization reference, it installs a link in the district office set up. Oh okay. Hey, I've had that for a while. <laughs> like, wow, there's all sorts of cool stuff in here. I can't believe that um nobody mentioned this earlier. <laughs> hey, can I throw a shout out by the way? I'm glad you brought that up. And one thing we we don't do here is peddle our products, but this is one that we offer for free. And since you brought this up, I'm just going to mention that I'm in the I'm in the process right now of adding a lot more content to that for webinars that we're doing right now. Because of so, me. Yeah, yeah. Cuz well because there's a lot of stuff that Ryan doesn't quite get, so I have to document it for him. <laughs> so Ryan so, can learn it from your uh, documentation. So keep an, eye, keep, an eye on the, keep an eye on our website or uh, check, check for new, new features, of that, new versions of that plugin. Check, 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 check. And what I also <laughs> love about the, because of the examples in it, you can take a look at the code of the plugin and see it's like, okay, mm -hmm. if this results in this, how do I actually... You How did he do that? Yeah. I do want to also, though, because um, you're, you're talking about how uh, at PSU, you know, you kind of went there and then, you know, you went to one session and then you went to the other session. And you're like, well, where the hell did I miss something in between? Um, I, to me, me, my development 
up, upcoming sound very similar, honestly, to yours when it comes to power school. And uh, uh, I mean, my experience is very similar too. And the thing is, at the end of the day, I, I still recommend PSU to people that are new to power school because it's super helpful in learning power school, how it's supposed to run. And it's and, it, and it's helpful learning kind of thing, but you're absolutely right in that they don't teach a database theory and database architecture because I didn't figure. It, I, I mean, I, I got none of that out of it. I learned how to write queries, um, and 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 definitely not even in depth. And then I mean, you know, you come out of that and you dig down, you follow the rabbit hole, uh, and further and further. But um, I still would recommend people to go out, like that are brand new and take those opportunities. I think it's super helpful. Uh, and, then, and then you find the other resources afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the key point to that is, you know, if you go get those trainings, come back and use it. You know, mm -hmm. even if it's just on any way that you can um, on test environments is, is a great place to do that. But um, you'll definitely learn a lot more by playing with it and trying it than, than you'll ever learn sitting in a class. Yep. And, and I thought that Sometimes, and I know this is going to sound silly given the expense of it, but mm -hmm. there is a lot of value to just being exposed to something existing. Yes, yes. 100%. And so it was literally, before that, I had never heard of SQL. I had never heard of JavaScript. I had never heard of page fragments or anything. Because <laughs> why would I think that you could do that to a right. student information system? Because nobody else lets you do that. So... It well, was, dude, I didn't, the page, yeah. The page fragments, like, I mean, cause you're like, you've only been on power school for the past four years. When, when I was learning it, when, when like page fragments weren't even a thing, we were still customizing power school. Um, uh, CPM was brand new when I started power school Yeah, and never mind page fragments. <laughs> right. You know, Theo, what you just said, I, I wow. I just want to emphasize what you just said. I love it because it, it kind of harkens back to what you were talking about earlier about you went through all this work and weeks of entering things hand by hand, you know, one by one by hand. And and, and kind of my question to you that I wanted to ask but never quite got to is, you know, at what point do you go, I've spent eight hours trying to figure out the best way to do this. And I know I could do it by hand and take two weeks to do it. And I just spent eight hours and I didn't figure something out. So do I spend another hour and maybe figure it out? Or do I spend eight more hours and figure out there's no better way? And do I just decide to start doing it by hand? You know what I'm saying? So you know what you're saying, you're saying yeah. is perfect because even if you don't, because I think so many people go to these conferences or learn these skills and, and then they go back, they come home from a conference and, and reality sets in. I've heard this story a billion times. I, I, I learned it, but I didn't have a chance to use it. And you know what? Even if you know that it's a thing and that it exists, when this problem comes up, you can know, no, there's definitely a better way to do this. It's worth figuring that out and not resulting to the atomic solution of the next two weeks going is, record by is record. Is there a right answer to that question, though? No, I mean that that tipping that tipping point is going to be different for everyone. Exactly. And and luckily in this case, I had the time uh, because right. as long as the problem was getting solved, uh, the client didn't care. I mean, there was a excuse me, there was an ultimate stopping line where you had to be done by. But then I just like stayed up and sloshed through it because at that time I didn't have an alternative. I didn't know <laughs> right. another way to do it, but. Then going around and being around a lot of these people and going to these PSUGs, and I've been very fortunate to be at a company that supported going to PSUs and PSUGs, and it was – you never know um, – like, for example, on the – I'll put it this way. On the group IO thing, I read every single thing that comes through there, even if it has absolutely nothing to do with anything I'm doing at the time, because sometimes I need my brain just to record that – this is a thing that could be out there. Yeah. Cool. And if you that come up with like this a situation later. in and of itself, man. Now, I tell you what's a full time job is um, Vance Allen. Uh, or <laughs> yeah, me. don't even get me started. Uh, I believe <laughs> we have to officially bad. refer to him as um, 
2020 Power School Champion of the Year, Vance Allen. Uh, oh. I, I don't know how he does it, man. And he's on the the forums on Power School also, and that like everywhere I go, he's just got responses to how the. You, have you met Vance? I have in in okay. Atlantic City, and my first impression was he is taller than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I took him out to karaoke one night in, in uh, Myrtle Beach. He, yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> he but didn't sing. He's just so methodical about everything and so well documented. And it's like, but I, I will tell you what I like about uh, coming across him were two things. One thing showed a goal of finally a level of proficiency that you can reach. Not necessarily saying that that is the goal, but uh, where I ran into a lot of problems personally as a, going up becoming a power school support person is um, if you ever seen Goodwill Hunting, yeah. And there's a scene where Stellan Skarsgård character, he's supposed to be this hotshot MIT math professor, and everybody thinks he's the stuff. But then he goes in this private moment with Matt Damon's Will Hunting, and he says, "Look, you know." Everyone, there are only a handful of people in the world who know the difference between me and you. And everybody thinks I'm you, but I know I'm not you. And I feel exactly like that a lot of times coming up where it's like people think because I can solve one or two problems, they're just because I, my head was a little out of the box in the way I approach a problem that now, like I'm a Vance or a Romy or a Roger or Sprick type. Oh, that's right. I'm not our there friends, yet. Like it's our grandmothers who think we're all whiz tech whizzes, right? And everyone says, "Oh, we my, were grand- my grandson is so great with computers." <laughs> I can't even find my remote for things. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that that was one of the things when I had to realize where it's like, look, I can do your thing. I can't do that thing, uh, but one day, one day I might be able to. And sure. but it's. It's one of the things I've been working to overcome and try to find my own sort of flavor and how I like to take on courses and or um, tickets from my various customers. And because I'm one of those like inside the outside box thinkers, I'm <laughs> so outside the box, I'm in the box, sort of like an Escher drawing. It is um, a case in point where we got the other day, there was a client who submitted a thing. It was a relatively new client of ours. And they said, all the Chromebooks in our computer lab can't access PowerSchool. I'm like, well, that's very weird. Your PowerSchool server is up. I don't know uh, what you're talking about. And so the way they are framing things was all about the Chromebook because that's where they see the problem coming from with a Chromebook. But it turns out it was really just a browser cache issue that they needed to clear out because we had changed the IP address of the server. And so <laughs> they had an old bookmark that was referring to where it was, not where it is. But a lot of times, if you don't have a little sort of creativity to you when you're trying to debug, uh, especially what people say, um, you could get stuck investigating what's wrong with the Chromebooks. For way too long, like, yeah. But there's nothing wrong with the Chromebooks. And that is and, – and look, yeah, at me, America. Look, look at me, America, and also Canada. Look at me. The most important thing when you're talking to customers, do not pay attention to them. They have <laughs> no idea what their problem is. They, <laughs> this message is not endorsed by the, the other three of us. <laughs> and I, what I mean by that is simply – But I understand what you mean. Yeah. A lot well, of people – like a, a, a house, everybody lies. Yeah, and I, not so much from a lying perspective, but people often Mis- they can only characterize problems. their problem through how they're experiencing it. Yeah, yeah. and so yes, it's like they'll start to put links together that can throw you off going into tracks that's really not headed toward the answer. Red so herring. it's always you have to take with a grain of salt, you know, how you were told, and really pick out. What are the objective things that I can test for? What are the objective sure. things that I can replicate? And then lead that to a very systematic way of, of trying to solve whatever it is you're trying to solve. I hear what you're saying, and I think it's analogous to how we approach things when people come to our company with customization requests. 
right, Sean? I think you can speak to this because Sean is the guy that talks to our clients to find out what their problems are that they need solved. Yeah. And, and I've often said, thankfully, now that we have Sean, I don't have to do so much of this work anymore. But when I did have to communicate with clients, I always told them, look, I am going to I'm going to help you so that I can develop what you want, not what you asked for. Right. <laughs> Well, I don't know if that makes sense, but but they say no, I want this and this and this, and and you have to be able to say, well, you didn't think about, but what if and this scenario and that scenario and that's just it. I mean, people come people come to you so t- so many times with something fixed in their head, um, and yeah, when you're helping folks troubleshoot and you're supporting folks. Uh, you got to help talk them out, back them out of their own corner sometimes. Yeah, one, one of the biggest things that I, yeah. that I see in those conversations that people tend to forget about, because again, they're so close to the problem. I need this problem fixed for me and we can, we can solve that problem. But is that really a problem for everybody? And by everybody, I mean, every security group, because a lot of times people don't think about like, well, a lot of people shouldn't have access to whatever we're building for them. So then we got to, you know, add that piece to it. But yeah, it's, it's really picking out and and knowing not just the problem that's in front of that person, but the overall problem and make sure that it's that it's fixed for everyone. I, I, one thing there, Eric, that you said that totally resonated me with was uh, what they want versus what they need. Kind of how you're saying that. What they want versus what they asked for. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's such a hard line to to navigate because I mean, you and I have been doing the the you know uh, in various aspects in various places, been doing customer developments for that, and I, I agree with that mentality. But it sends you down such a rabbit hole. You end up becoming your own adv- your, your own devil's advocate. And you end up making things so much worse sometimes without an attempt. And I mean, it's all like it's all with good intention, but it's so hard. And sometimes you just kind of want to like look at it and be like, this is what you asked for. This is what we're going to get. Well, let me ask you both that question of um, how much do you balance trying to anticipate what they should need given what they give gave you versus I've definitely had some people who it's like you literally asked for this. So then I literally gave you that where I had somebody give me like an, we want a SQL report that will export out blah, blah, blah. And we want it to look exactly like this. I said, okay. So I wrote that like, eh, now that I see it, I don't know that I, I, I want it. It's like, so, that's what you asked for. Literally. So that's, kind of like that's, one of, that's one of my favorite examples is working at a district and I would have like a principal come to me and say, hey, I need to know the GPAs of my senior class. OK, so do you want cumulative for their entire high school career? Do you just want this year? Do you want stored grades only? Do you want projected So it's all of these questions that, you know, that I need to have answered before I can give an answer to what seems like a very simple question. It's like if I I can see their kind of what you're saying, Theo, there, um, if I can see uh, a, a real good possibility of this coming back of them going, whoa, 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 we screwed up. <laughs> we didn't actually mean this. And and now that we realize what that actually meant, you know, then then I'll try to bring it up, you know, and and even so, like you know, I I don't want to leave anybody in the lurch. I definitely don't want to be just like a, a hard cut asshole. But at the same time, um, you, you know, there's only so many arguments you can have. <laughs> With, I mean, I mean, constructive arguments though. Like you got to sometimes just be like, okay, here's the line. We're gonna do it, and it's it's kind of like, all right. Just so we're clear, this is what's happening. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, I try to when I'm when I'm chatting with clients or customers, I give them a range. I'm like, here's here's your entry level solution, here's your gold standard solution, here's your platinum solution. You told me this is the problem that you want to solve, depending upon how much money you want to spend, because I realize folks have to work on budgets. If yeah. you just want to get it done, I can do that. And I don't work on commission, so I'm just really honest with people. Like, look, if you just want to get it done, I can do this. 
here's the problem. You decide it's not good enough next year. You're calling us back and shelling out more money to add a new feature. So I can make it uh, configurable. We can add some parameters. We can do this. It's going to take longer to develop, but you're going to be happier with the end product. Yep. And those, and, are, those uh, are part of the you, conversation. You just give them the options and be honest and let them decide for themselves. But but mm-hmm. right, you've got to let you've got to you've got to alert that that person about what they missed in their myopia when they communicated with you initially. Yeah. And that's not to sound condescending to to folks. Not at all. No. Because I've I've been that guy too. I feel from the development perspective, I want them to have the bigger picture because a lot of the times it can, like, I mean, there's some more work maybe, but it also can be easier to develop if, if, everything is part of the picture because um, it reduces the risk of you having to rewrite things to address a change that might come down the line in the future. You know, I mean, yeah, when you hard code things, sure. Of course that completely negates all that. But I mean, sometimes, you know, people want values hard coded and then you explain to them, well, maybe you might want to be able to change this down the road. (laughs) Right. And sure. I'm a total code set guy. Now I, I will, I will code in a code set. Uh, <laughs> and there's so a power curious, school. Theo, what, how did this uh, How did this report shake out? Did you have to rewrite it all together? Um, uh, not all together. To- there is. Um, it was half what you asked for is covered, and half is like, oh, okay. Where the legitimately it was like, now that we see this and to use it, we realize we left something out. So. In all fairness, I'm just I'm joking. You guys are great. Uh, the and one of the things that um, I know we have t- heading more into a direction of is a a little more sort of scrum based operations, checking in with people as you do it. You know, don't write the whole thing first and then come back and because I did have one of those meetings with a client once where I, I wrote this whole page in a form and. You know, it's like it does the thing you asked for, but they didn't like how it was <laughs> how it was constructed in terms of from a user perspective. And it was like mockups. <sighs> that would have been nice to know before we got started. It was mockups. The, the feedback loop. That's that's key, man. Right? Because the feedback loop. I I'm sorry. I got I've got to tell this anecdote of several years ago when I was developing a product that someone had asked for. I was halfway done, and I send an email. I'm like, hey, can we check in? I just want to be sure. And uh, the response was, well, I already gave you all the specifications. I don't I don't have time to deal with you now. Let me know when it's done. So I did. Well, that's that's really not going to work for me. And, and we'll we'll have to mute out if I was going to actually verbalize where my head went after that. But, uh, <laughs> my song. Well, hey guys, we're, we are coming up towards the end. Um, you know, we, we talked about the topic of this being incredible workarounds and I'd just like to, to get maybe just a quick bit from each of you, kind of what you had in mind and something that you've done that you would consider and an, like a really good workaround that maybe our listeners and viewers could, could take back. I can start. Uh, so one of the things that, that I, I think people don't often think about are what are the tools that I already have at my disposal? Sometimes it's good enough I, if I can get 80% of the way there. And I think a great example of this is log entries in PowerSchool, right? So I've had people come to me before and they're like, I need you to develop a customization for this. And I'm like, you know, I could do that. And this is too where I get super honest with folks. I'm like, here's the cheap version. Here's the mid price version. Here's the expensive version. I'll say the cheap version is you pay zero dollars, you use log entries, create a log type for this, and that's how you track this information. And sometimes yep. they go, you know what? Yeah, that'll do the trick. Another example. I, I wish I would have started because that was mine. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. It's OK. But right but, along but those lines, there, and there, again, there, this is yeah. I'm, I'm going to bring up one of the MBA plugins, but this is a free one. So, uh, again, I'm not peddling anything. But we just had a conversation about this earlier today where our COVID plugin that we offer for free Mm -hmm. allows um, parents and students to submit assessments, self-assessments for their health uh, from the public portal. 
And we've had districts that have said, you know, we don't really need to collect those assessments, but that tool's flexible enough that we need to get, collect this other information. And yeah, it says submit self-assessment, but if we just train our students that this is how you check in that you were learning. And Sean, I think you brought this up. This is how we take attendance that you logged on and were learning remotely today. It that was actually really those tools in creative ways. Those, those are your workarounds that I think are priceless. Yeah. Well, and I think for me, workarounds, um, you know what, I can, we've, we've talked often about the, the mm -hmm. groups IO and, uh, you know, the I'll, also we'll call colloquially uh, the, um, is that the right word? Anyways, uh, PSUG forums. Um, but uh, I would just say with COVID again in mind, I, I thought was really awesome within the past, you know, year from now till 12 months ago when people started trying to figure out how to manage uh, cohorts and attendance groups using the tracks. Track. Because I thought it was so, like, it, to me, it was really interesting. And and it, and it shows that the, um, the, the way that group works, the way everyone comes together, how people are like, well, how are we going to do this? And it was just like people kept adding on. People kept throwing on their bits. And before you knew it, everyone had this one solution that was made, frankly, internationally um, just from user input. Like it wasn't like power school suggested this. It wasn't like anyone had to make up a, a plug in. It was that this group, everybody came together and collectively came up with a solution to manage attendance with the tracks just based on things that existed in power school. No one had to create anything new. Yep, and that's just, the thing right there. It already yep. existed. It already existed. They just they just figured out a way to work around the problem without building anything new. I thought that was awesome. And I'm gonna give my oh, other one and then I'll and then I'll pass it off to Theo to end on. Just uh, in case Theo takes his. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. <laughs> <laughs> I took my first one, so I, I want to get it in there. Uh, using the, the language translation toolkit, you know, instead of trying to customize every single page to, to change wording or change whatever, um, using that translation toolkit to, to change some verbiage on, on your screens rather than doing customizations. I actually have to uncustomize some pages from my first year because I did not know about that four years ago <laughs> and so when people wanted like the labels changed on the general demographic screen i went don't roast me i directly customized the page i didn't know i didn't know okay i'm gonna hey, fix it fine. i'm gonna fix it you saw um, right i solved the problem they wanted to say something different and it does um but uh i wish i had known about about that language uh translation toolkit because i I did not know. And there are way more of those tags in there than you think. <laughs> Can I expand upon that for just a moment? Because I love I, I, I love this topic. And for anyone that doesn't know, language translation toolkit, some some people may think it's just about if I'm in a Spanish speaking locale versus English or French or German, but it's more than that. Uh, and, and obviously this isn't a tutorial, but go look it up if you're not familiar. If you say, I don't want this word to be this on this page, you don't have to customize that page. Fun story. I was teaching at a PSUG one time and somebody was really upset with me. They said it's not funny because they noticed I'd used language translation to change the word student to inmate. <laughs> you're, you're this and, right. and they said, you know, that's that's really not funny. And I said, well, actually, first of all, uh, that was a practical example because we actually work with a prison that uses power school. And second of all, it is kind of funny. <laughs> Anywho, if you don't know, uh, now you know. If you don't know language translation, figure it out. Yes, powerful tool. And I'm sorry, Theo, back to you, my friend. Well, no, it's um, probably one of my greatest workarounds uh, is realizing if you can get on the focus group for your state reporting – Sometimes you can just get power school to write it for you. Uh, if you can convince them it is a state requirement. Um, there have well been played. a number of things where I realized it's like, Hey, you know, Leo, don't show your hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where I realized it was, I got a request to customize something 
and and I could have written it. And I, I said, wait a minute, this is in the handbook. Why am I writing this? They should write this. And so I actually went to our state rep and it's like, you know, I know why a lot, how you can get a lot more of this certain school type to buy your product. If only power school had this one feature, which is a state requirement. And since you're the state team, I'm not saying you should write it. But I'm definitely not not saying you should write it. <laughs> so, and they That's would, great and they wrote it. Um, so it was. There's your workaround. Make it a <laughs> figure out how to make it a requirement. Get the state team to do it instead. Beautiful, <laughs> Theo. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a great conversation. Hopefully, uh, our listeners got a couple good workarounds, especially the uh, the focus group one. I love that. Or uh, just in Twitter chat, anyways. Yeah, for sure. Until next time, Brian, you got you want to. Well, do we it? don't really have a next really time. Know. I'll just we say don't. next time. I don't know. I'll need some bits. We're gonna be talking about stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, hit us up on the uh, some bits at nba linkcom Give us some ideas. Maybe we'll invite you on the show. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye. All right. Thanks for joining us, and a special thanks to our subscribers. Consider becoming one today. Enjoy more episodes and learn more at mba-link.com.